Hi everyone, it's Mark from M&M Rails and welcome to another episode of Community Roundhouse. Tonight, I'm kicking it freestyle. That's right, no script. You know why? Because every time I follow a script, I tend to make a mistake or trip up on my words. Well, not tonight. I'm going no script. Here are a few examples of me tripping up on my words or making mistakes. I know it's hard to believe, but here's some video proof. I won't go into too much technical. That is not enough time to get the gears to mesh nicely or even to out jerk any operations. These tank cars have the old couplers and don't, uh, aren't very heavy. And it's not a huge deal if I hit it with the screw. Damn it. Next, the ugly copper. Damn it. And it was right. I did a lot of research online, visited a lot of companies, and the directions say to wait 15 minutes or until the glue had gone. If I was really artsy, if I was really artsy, what I want would have a dedicated piece of paper under each tree that you make. Have a dedicated piece of paper. Have a dedicated piece of paper for the trees you make. Have a dedicated piece of paper you make your trees on so that you can dump extra foliage that falls off the trees back into the bag and reuse it. So I said to myself, self, no. Before I sign off, I just want to thank you all for the generous, generous, no. And what? Another talent? And Gucci's in the shot. Stick around for more bloopers because we have lots of them tonight. And if you have bloopers, send them to us at Community Roundhouse. Check out the description for more details. Also tonight, we have Dale, our roving reporter of sightings of Jerry in his truck and Roy in his truck on layouts here and there all around the world. If you see Jerry or Roy on your layout, please send clips to Community Roundhouse. And lastly, we have a monster interview tonight. That's right. We have Al from Monster Railroad speaking to Vinny, Brian, and John. So without further ado, guys, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, and I want to welcome all of you to the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western. This is episode five of the Community Roundhouse, starring or featuring today, Monster Railroad. This is Brian. How are you, John? Brian, I'm doing really good, and glad to see everybody here in chat. We've got a pretty good show lined up, so why don't we get to it? That's right. Let's start. All right. For our first layout update, Brian, we've got a guy named Nick. He's got an in-scale layout, and it looks really great. He's got a beautiful stone arch bridge. Uh, he's got a really nice, detailed blast furnace scene, and we got some pretty cool night running shots.
And I tell you what, we want to thank Nick for allowing us to use this video in our episode five today. Thank you so much, Nick. And the name of Nick's channel is Nick. And Nick is an in-scale modeler. Go over and check him out. We appreciate you at the end of this show. Check out Nick. Uh, when I last checked, Nick had four subscribers. And I think he deserves a lot more than that. I tell you what. For subscribers, we can certainly change that quickly, everybody. So once this is over, we're going to shoot over there and subscribe to Nick. Everybody, check him out. If you like him, we'll subscribe to him. That's right. All right, next up, we got a, a channel, uh, Lehigh Valley 1980. The name of the channel is really what caught my attention because the Lehigh Valley is just about, oh, maybe five or six miles in that direction from me. This is a really nice O-scale layout. He's just starting it. And he's managing to squeeze a lot of O-scale model railroading into a 12 by 12 foot room. Hold on, John. Wait, you said how big? A, a 12 by 12. And what scale? O-scale. Oh. <laughs> the first one might have been better. Oh. Oh. There we go. <laughs> 12 by 12 O scale, Lehigh Valley from your neck of the woods. And you say he allowed us to use some clips, John? Yes, he did. He allowed it. This is some clips we got from his very first video. So All right, let's check them out. Good evening, YouTube. And this is Lehigh Valley 1980. This is my very first video. So welcome to the Broken Arrow Division of the Lehigh Valley Railroad. All the towns are fiction in here. Nothing's based on anything, really. I just like the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Um, and uh, it's built on a 12 by 12 room with mostly three foot shelves. But as you can see here, as the building, the two buildings you see here, it is on a 12 inch shelf. That's all I needed for the doorway. And for me to put two, two rows of cars in, that's fine for right there. I just want to make nice, nice space out of the space that I had there. Um, the rest of it is between a three and a three and a half foot shelf. So, mm, it's okay for what the room is. Out of a spare bedroom upstairs that the fiance was nice, old, nice enough to let me have. As you can see, it is very under construction. I just started this last year as I left HO and came to O scale. This is Main Street, not much of a town right now, but some of the buildings are in and lit, some are not. Mostly from the stoplights over, nothing's connected as I just put them in there. The road isn't even glued down. You look down here, you have the Greyhound Terminal, which is not connected. You're going to have just one little intersection there, nothing big. Um, i got to step up that end three-story building so it matches up with everything else. But pretty much how you see it is how it's going to be, except for just gluing everything down. Got to have room for buses to park. I'm going to have another road coming in front of that and basically ending in a cul-de-sac. Just with a couple buildings and then at the end here, it's going to have a road for trucks to go into the next part of the layout. You have your main line coming into the sidings here, coming into the yard. <clears throat> Three tracks, all curved. Like I said, or 54. Coming into here, this is also 54. It comes down into into H and H feeds, and another building which I have not named yet. I'm going to put a couple more <coughs> yard lights in. Excuse me, <coughs> and we'll light the yard up a little better. Get everything ballasted. I'm going to put a tunnel portal there where I cut the hole in the wall, and that's going to be. I'm going to probably do some kind of tunnel halfway through the curve and it comes through here. I put a lift out bridge in since it's on the shelf and I have to get in and out of here and I don't feel like walking underneath the layout anymore. I put a bridge in. It's an MTH 30 inch bridge. All I did was to make the track to fit was just put a little bit of cork underneath and screw it fast. Underneath for power I ran R RCA jacks up into the track and then for the light which is right here 
another set of RCA jacks which aren't plugged in. Like I said, I'm just starting. So please stick around for more videos. Like I said, I'm sorry, this is my very first video. And I'm very nervous behind the camera. So if you're looking forward for more videos, please uh, subscribe and we'll see where this channel can go. Thank you and have a great night and thanks for watching the video. When I last looked, Lehigh Valley 1980 had 41 subs. And I think we can uh, do something about that too. That's right. Every time we talk about subs, I think of Uncle Wilmer whipping it. <laughs> that count up there after the show. If you like his stuff, let's check it out. All right. Hallelujah, everybody. Our pleadings worked. We got bloopers from four different people, four different people this month for episode five. I'm so proud. I'm sure my man Vinny's proud. John's proud. Tell us about him, John. Yeah, we could, we should be calling this the bloopers episode. Uh, let's start off with a couple bloopers here from Jerry Satterell. What's up, my YouTube friends? Oh, Lord. <laughs> What's up, my YouTube friends? <laughs> Just checking. Hey, I hope you're all doing well. This is a reminder and a mm, did you know video. It's a reminder for questions from the truck. And so, no, ma'am. No, 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 no. My main man, Jerry, showing us how to do it or not to do it. And to not be scared to show everybody. <laughs> That's right. All right. Up next, we've got uh, a new contributor to Community Roundhouse, Dustin Hoffman. And uh, Dustin Hoffman suffers the, the same gremlin problems we all do once you're trying to run trains with the camera on. This is the passenger line. It's wired up, too. Let's hope and pray it goes. And fingers crossed. She doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let me see if it's not making a connection. Nope, there's a connection there. Well, I'll have to wait. And I heard that, JD. I do have <laughs> power coming up here. I'm pretty sure I do. Don't tell me I didn't drop any feeder wires down here. Huh? Did I not drop a feeder wire down here? I <laughs> would do it then, wouldn't it, boys and girls? I forgot to drop a feeder wire down for my passenger life. Well, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Tiny victories. Let's just forget I even did that. There's only places I'm hooked in. But you're going to see that those three places right now where I'm hooked in is enough power to bring him around. So he's going to come up representing the passenger line. Across the bridge. That's the wind generator, which I don't have running. I don't know why I didn't run it today. But it does run. I think I put that in the video. Comes through Hard Scrabble Pass, and you saw him just drop down. There's a blooper reel for the community roundhouse, but that's the first time I've had that happen. Well, I'll tell you what, Dustin's no different than any of us. If you roll the camera, the trains derail. We've all been down that road before. John Denver works for me most of the time, but not always. <laughs> all right, Dustin, maybe you should put some John Denver on next time you're running your trains. Either that or some bullfrog snot or whatever they call it. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have a blooper from across the pond. Christopher from the Hanna line, which used to be Sakura Dentia, uh, suffering the same camera problems that uh, Dustin suffered. I got an idea, John. Maybe electrical problems are an airborne illness. Yeah, that, that could be. We've had our share of airborne illnesses recently.
Christopher. So Christopher had a problem with his other channel, y'all. So what we're going to do after the show, if you like his stuff, let's go over there and check out his new one and get his sub counts back up to where they belong. Christopher's got an awesome layout. He does a lot of Japanese modeling. And he's got other plans, too. So go ahead and check him out and see what he's got up. And we want to thank you for contributing to this month's episode, Christopher. We appreciate you. Thanks for hanging in there. We're glad you got a new channel going and up and strong. What was Claude doing here, John? Uh, Claude's stumbling all over himself when he's trying to, to start his video. They had to step it in over himself. That is, you sound like you know a little bit about that, John. Yeah, I, I, I've been accused of doing that. Hey, that. I'm good at that too, buddy. <laughs> okay, we have uh, update number 14 on the camp. That'll go to Brian as a blooper. Thank you, Claude. We appreciate you, man. <laughs> Thank you for contributing to episode boo, episode boo, five. Thank you, Claude. <laughs> Thanks, Claude. And I was thinking about my main man, Dave BNSF in scale and his fantastic locomotive roster video. And I decided we need a new segment. Let's call it Blast from the Past. Let's look back a year or so back and let's find some excellent videos, some stuff we haven't seen in a while, some things we might want to rewatch again, John. There's a lot of it out there and it's easy to, to forget what we've seen with all the, especially now with all the videos coming out. So this is just a little teaser for this month. We're going to have a blast from the past segment from now on on the Community Roundhouse. We're going to have just a short segment today, and we're going to have Dave BNSF in scales loco roster to launch that. He put this out almost a year ago. It's a fantastic video. I'm going to tell you what, if anybody needs more locos, it's Dave BNSF in scale. <laughs> we'll tell you what, John. I decided that I needed to name a building on my layout after Jerry. He's done a fantastic job with my extension. We, we got so much work going on over here on the layout. It has to be him. I'm not that motivated. I'm trying to get him a new truck right now, but we have all kind of Jerry and Roy sightings. We got Dale helping us announce that right now. All right, Dale, take it away. Allison spotted Container Man 68 down in Australia. Crikey, mate, that must have been a long swim. You're going to need lots of pie and lasagna after that one. And we got Brian. He's down at Satterelli Mills. Jerry's cutting him some lumber. That feller's always up to something. There he is in his truck. He's loading up and ready to head out. There he is. He's off to Lulu's for pie and coffee. Oh, Stephen Roy. <laughs> hey, Roy. Hey, Roy. What's going on? Now, there's Roy. He's over at Cousin hey, Benny, and there's hey, Jerry right, right behind him. Holy Hot pursuit. All right, guys. I guess they're racing to see uh, who's going to get lasagna that, first. Please, anytime he delivers to that place, <laughs> he's here at my house. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Dale. We appreciate your help with this. And uh, let's see if we can't keep the Jerry and Roy sightings coming. Keep them going, everybody. Jerry and Roy and anybody else that's in our model railroad community you see on your layout, let's go ahead, shoot some video of it, send it to us on the Community Roundhouse website. It's so simple. It's so easy. The, the, the link is in the description. You just click to the Community Roundhouse webpage. You click on I want to get involved. Click one more link and it goes to your photos. You click the video you want to upload to us. It's right there. It's simple. It's easy. More people are doing it. We're getting more videos every month and we want to thank y'all for that. That's right. Without your contributions, this show just really wouldn't be possible. That's right. We want to thank you for your Jerry and Roy sightings. Thank you, Dale, for getting involved. Our, our guest for this month uh, is another guy that you've probably heard of. It's Big Al Mayo from Monster Rail, right? Monster Railroad. So this guy, Al, loves model railroad. And I tell you what, he's got a fantastic looking or the making of a fantastic looking HO Southern Cal desert layout. It's going to take up his entire basement. It's huge. He's been building the bench work for the last couple months. John, tell us what you think. This guy has more enthusiasm than, than any two other modelers I know. And he's making incredible progress on his layout. He's only been at it a couple of months. And 
I think his bench work is finished or just about complete. I tell you what, he built, he works on his layout, he shoots, he uploads videos, he comments to his subscribers. He's a good guy. We talked with him a long time, a very nice guy. I tell you what, he was a pleasure to get to know. We there he is. Hey, Al. I think. Hey, hey Al, guys. how you doing? I'm doing good. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, better late than never, man. Let me mess with my speaker volume. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. I was just on the phone with the COVID-19 testing. I'm going to get tested tomorrow. Uh, okay. I've been having pain all over, so I'm getting tested tomorrow. So oh, well, good luck with it. Busy. Oh, nice. you got tested. Oh, I hope so. I'm getting tested wow. tomorrow, yes. I'm going for testing tomorrow because I've been having oh. symptoms, real bad symptoms like body aches, tightness in the chest, runny nose, uh, body aches and joint pains everywhere. Just awful. Yeah, it just started that. though. And you're working, like being you front work front line, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm firefighter in the city of New London, which is a couple miles, 10 miles away. And, you know, we've had a lot of calls, so it was bound to happen. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's sure. what I have, because like I said, it's ache all, I'm aching all over, everything hurts, you know? So, I, I'm, it's manageable, though. The thing is, it's manageable, it's just pain. Right. So, that's it. Do they kind of have like a fast track, fast track system for y'all to get that? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, doing real well. Yeah, they do. I was just on, a, like, literally, I missed that time period that I was planning for 6 o'clock because I was getting the answered question, the, the questionnaire, and their testing is, like, tomorrow morning at some point, and it's, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, a rapid test, like a 15-minute strep type of test. Okay. So yeah. I'll be going through that tomorrow at some point. Wow. So I should know by tomorrow night if I have it, which I'm pretty sure I do. Oh, good oh, luck wow. with that. I, I hope you like, know. Yeah, I sure do. Well, do you feel like talking yeah. about your layout? Body aches, body aches. What's that? Do you feel like talking about your layout? Yeah, yeah, definitely can. I'm manageable. I'm done with that. I can talk about my layout and what I have going on down here right now. You're, you're making uh, some incredible. What progress. would you like to know about the layout? What would you like? Oh, my progress. Okay, so. <clears throat> On my layout, I just basically, um, before I started this layout, I was you know, coming up with ideas in my head about how I'd build this whole new layout from what I did before. And I wanted it to do it so it was streamlined, so it would be consistent and faster than what I built before. And the way that I did before was my walls had like, they weren't walls like this behind me. My walls were like stone. So I couldn't drill holes and build, you know, any bench work into the walls. So when I bought this house with the newer stone wall, with the newer concrete walls, I was able to uh, use that to build this whole new style. So that's how it came about with no legs, no legs going down like on my old layout and just the legs going in to the wall, as you can see in the videos and stuff. So that's a much cleaner. Look. It's worked out very well. I can imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know what? I I built it knowing that I'm a pack rat, too. So I built okay. it knowing that I have a whole bunch of crap underneath the layout. Right. So that's how it was built. Okay. <laughs> to be designed that way, you know? And uh, so with my layout design and everything I was doing, a couple things. I, I didn't want to do a double-decker layout. I, I've never liked double-deckers my whole life. I've never liked them it's just it's too short in top or too short in the bottom and it's extra lighting i just never liked them i wanted a layout that was like standing you know standing like being 150 feet in the real world standing above it i wanted a layout like that not in between two two different layout spaces so that's why i decided on just doing one level even though i had plenty of room to do two i wanted one level um Another thing that I wanted was uh, I knew, like, I didn't need to design a layout that was going to be really articulated all the way through with, you know, narrow aisles. I wanted it to be a room, but I knew kind of the basics, right? We all know the basics are going to be your layout's going to go around the walls 
and then you have a peninsula inside to, to make a further layout run. And I knew this upon building it. So as you saw in my earlier videos, when I first bought this house, I was doing things to get to that point, which is painting the walls blue on top, tan on bottom, and then installing the lighting. That was really a key. And then also adding plugs, which I'm so glad I added all these plugs. Like I did all that time before, I wasn't sure about it. I'm glad I added all plugs around my layout because they have actually come in handy right now. So like as I'm building sections right now, I have a lot of those plugs being utilized with uh, charging the batteries. Um, my sawzalls, I mean, excuse me, my chop saw, I've moved that around different places. So these plugs really come in handy than pulling or dragging um, extension cords. Sure. So that was a big deal. And um, it was just basically it. I just had a plan and, and executed the plan that I had. And so far, I like it. I like what I've done. I, I took, I copied a couple things. Like one thing I could say that I copied was the holes, the holes that are drilled through each section. I copied that from that company that makes Benchwork. It's like Benchwork Ready for Now. Right. I don't know if you heard of I don't know the name of the company, but you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've heard of them. It's like, they have like they come to your house and build the bench work for you and all those slots that they had had holes in them and i thought oh that makes sense because you're going to be running wires too and i remember doing my old layout i had two by threes so the two by threes were thick like this i had added loops to the bottom of those two by threes so the wires actually went to the bottom of the two by threes they didn't go through them right so i copied that knowing that i wanted it to go right through and that was basically all i copied and everything else was trial and error I'm just glad it worked out <laughs> so far. It sure it looks like it is. What else can I think of? You certainly made a ton of progress. Yeah, I've been moving right along. Uh, what, made, what made you pick the, you see, the line you pick? The so oh, sure. Union Pacific, Union Pacific, I chose that one because that, uh, when I first started doing model trains, like one thing, I, I, I like to do things a little bit different than everybody else. That's how i always been. And everybody has green tree, green grass layouts. Or they were like, if you think about every layout out there, green tree, green grass, meaning they were always like like West Virginia, right? It was, that's like that my vision. <laughs> every layout took place in Pennsylvania or West Virginia, a little bit of mountains and coal. I wanted something. I was like, well, I want something that looks totally different. And Florida wasn't, wasn't realistic, so I didn't want like palm trees and 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 like florida florida areas i wanted something totally different so i wanted dry desert palm trees and when i looked you know doing all that stuff i saw oh, union pacific was the one you know running through the areas as well as bnsf but i had to think for union pacific anyway just like union pacific you know and uh since i was already heavily invested in union pacific stuff i was just going to build this new layout being the socal desert rail division two because it's going to be a follow-up of what I built before, just better, for sure, for sure better. Um, I have like two sections left, two major sections left to do on my layout right now, which is the which is the loop that's going to be there, the, the loop at the end of the last video I shot. That I got to finish that loop section, right? And then a section that goes right across my uh, water heater. So those are the two major sections, and then I have to build this bridge or right now where i'm sitting at is in my lounge so i have to build the bridge a looked up bridge for going in and out the lounge and into the um uh laundry room so i have this idea for a bridge too which i think is going to be so cool because i have this cool idea for a bridge i haven't seen anyone else do it so i don't know but my idea for a bridge is going to be like a a good thick oak board right it doesn't have to be super thick but you know good uh six eight inches thick and on the bottom of that oak board is going to be two pistons that, like, I have on my BMW. I have two brand new ones that they assist my trunk on my BMW to go up. You know, like, every car has them, right? Sure. So those two pistons will be to the bottom of the board. So once and on the bottom of the handle, the bottom of the handle will be like a uh, – um, it's going to be like a, uh, a screen door handle. So quick and easy screen door handle mm -hmm. like this. Right. You just take it so it can go this way or it can go this way. And you'll, as soon as you do that, it's going to go – and open nice. right up. It'll just go. Uh, so then when I close it, I grab the handle, pull it down, locks it right down. That's my idea for the bridge. I that think it's going to be super cheap. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be super cheap. That might work. Sure. Yeah, I've never... yeah, I think that works. Cool. Yeah, I've never seen anybody Everything that. Be... Yeah, yeah, that's why I thought I was actually I was running through all these ideas when I was at Home Depot, 
you know, a couple months ago and just, and I was laying in, actually, I was like laying in bed at like 2.30 in the morning, just laying here thinking and running through all these different ideas and I had a whole bunch. So one of my ideas is actually funny. One of my ideas for doing this was actually to take a screen door and cut the top section where the, where the piston is to cut that and then use that section. That's how it originally came out. You know, like a screen door that has that. So I was sure. thinking, oh, I'll cut that section and use that. And then I was like, well, that's extra work because now I have to relocate the handle, put part of the frame up. I was like, you know what? I can do it easier without that. So right. oak board with the so I'm only gonna need oak board, the pistons, which I already have for my crash BMW. I already have brand new pistons, and then Oh. Like the play. Well, it looks like we got a problem with that. Button accessible yeah. from either end. Pull it this way. This way. Should work out good. Well, we're having Hope some so. connections problems with you, Al. Am I still on here? Not, now you are, yeah. Yeah, you, you yeah. are. Yeah, is it my connection or is it yours? You stuttered for a uh, it's, it looks like it's my yours. connection. Looks like it's on your end. My punk kids are upstairs on their tablets. Uh, okay. It gotcha. is? No. Why you guys want to be on the tablets? Why don't you guys get off the tablet for a little bit? Uh, <laughs> kids, the all the Wi-Fi. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. That's well, what it yeah. is. They're hogging the Wi-Fi is the reasoning. Ah, uh, the kids will do they that. Tear it up. Yeah, if you're if you're able to move around, Al, give us a tour of the bench work. Where you at now? Sure. I can. Yeah. Okay. So. Right. Okay. Good. I can turn off the TV. Thank you. Okay. So, here's this is the lounge room. As you can see behind me, my favorite stuff, the Will Smith behind me. I, I said. Yeah. Lost him again. And Darius mainly mainly uses that. This right here is where the uh, hidden staging will be. This will be hidden staging into here. And all this is hidden staging with TV there. So this is where my bridge will be, which is right here. If you see, right. the bridge will ultimately come to here, it'll start here, and then it will go right over to this area right there. Okay. So that's how that would be. I'll check my lighting. So you come around here. Uh, I haven't done a video for this yet, but I got to do a video real soon because I, I'm going with this product right here. What's that? John, I think you might have something similar to that, huh? You back? Now you're back. Back again? Yeah. Yep. This is the foot. This is what you. I'm using this for road bed. This, you guys see this? Uh huh. This is a, a guy who sells this on eBay. I'm going with it with him. 300 feet for this, as opposed to cork or woodland phoenix. He just sent me some testing stuff, so I could test it out. This is who I'm going with. I just got that like two days ago. What is it? Is it, is it a foam product? It's a yeah, it's a foam product. It's like a deadening foam product that this guy makes on eBay. Okay. And it, uh, it's like, I, I, it's kind of hard to describe. It's it's denser than Woodland Scenics foam. So if right. you've seen that, it's denser than that. And it's more pliable than cork. So, so it's like, a, in, it's in between cork and Woodland Scenics foam. And it's, I think it's so much better. That's why I had to test it out first. I had him send me some and I'm buying 300 feet to do the whole way out. That's the plan. Um, mm -hmm. What we have here in the section right here, if you look here, this section is going to go to the hidden staging into where the yard, into where the hidden staging is in my lounge area. I will use my tool and cut cut a hole so it goes right through. Right. That's the plan there. If you guys saw my videos, you see I got a ton of drills. Yes, there's a ton of them. <laughs> there is a ton. I actually just got one in the mail today, another one of these. So I got another one of these today in the mail. And uh, I think that'll bring my total of like nine drills. I have them everywhere. 
You have so, more tape measures than drills. Yeah, I do. The tape measures are everywhere. They really are, you know. But that helps you get that quick work. You, I mean, if you want that. I'm going to up down, go to it if I need to. Over to here, this section, what I have to build now is a 45 degree angle section that'll go right here and on the other side. I have to build three, three 45 degree angled sections here on the other side and way over there behind behind the camera. Those are all set. Um, what else? So when I built this, I didn't. I still don't have a track plan. I have somebody working on a track plan for me, but I never had a track plan. I just know my basic area. You don't need a track plan to know your basic walking area. I, I don't think your track plan is the most important thing. Your, your most important thing is your, your, your layout bench work area. Then once you build that, then you fit your, your, your ideal layout, your ideal uh, track work into that section that you have. So therefore, you know what's going to go into it. If you're going to figure, plan it out, you know how much room to where you can put it at, you know? So it makes it much easier, in my opinion, but it's probably not the standard. Some sections I made lower, like this one's lower than this section, just because I knew I could make a nice section lower. It just didn't matter. If you guys saw my video I posted just today, in fact, I'm doing a, uh, a contest, a weathering contest, and no. it's going to be with the train and money. So you see I got money and stuff right there. I just did the video. I shot the video late last night, edited it, and then I posted the video today. So I'll be sending these out to 10 guys to weather. That's for the giveaway. That's a pretty cool contest. Yeah, I um I sent somebody over to you. His name's John Crowder, JC's Rip Track. Uh, I sent him an email and let him know about your contest. He said he's going oh, yeah? well, to try to see Because I have so far, yeah. when I last time I looked, there was like 15 emails already so wow. i feel like this probably fill up later today or tomorrow already 15 guys who already sent me stuff i haven't gone through them yet but i have them yeah. um the section i'm standing at right now right in front this is where the uh we, this is where the roof will go will be built right here and then another drill <laughs> <laughs> another drill and so there's a couple things that i've done with building this thing that made it so much easier and this is one of them right here I, oh I, yeah um, this a uh, cordless Finish nailer and the cordless brad nailer are the greatest things ever to make it building so much easier, as well as these saw horses. Oh, I needed those years ago. Wish I had them. Those make life so much easier. Um, some of my some of the track, as you guys know, I am going with concrete track. So right. that's a track that's there. I have to buy much more, but that's some of it. This is the other 45 degree angle section I said I have to add which would go right here, from here to about here, you know? So the trains, when they go around this corner, they won't have to go like this. They can nice and have a nice angle and go right across here. Sure. Nice and smoothly. Of course, followed by some more tape measures and more tape measures. <laughs> this is the section I have to build here. I already have an idea where I'm going to build that. There'll be a, a two foot by four foot section that I will build and put right here. And then I will build the side walls onto that two by four section. They will go into that section that I build in the middle. So that's removable in the event I have to move it. Um, some of the things I was talking about that made it so much easier streamlining was like things like this. So this is just a template, a 35 degree cut is what it says to you have to do. So I cut these for the supports. This is for the supports that go underneath. Okay. Basically right there, as you right. see. So I had a template so that they were all the same because, you know, you start doing them in the next year, you're like, what was the degree? How long was it? So I had them all so they were the same, as well as these. So this is another way that made streamlining so much easier. This is what I was talking about with the holes drilled into them. Yep. So when I did these, I used a template. This is the one I use. It's coming back. Okay, you guys are back now. Yep, we're back. Got it. Okay, so with these, this is just a blank template. And so what this is, is it's at, you see the exact size right there, right? 
Right. 22, 13 sixteenths. You know, I did all the measurements and everything so that when you put the two boards to the side of it, it ends up coming out to being 24 inches. Right. But so this is like this, so that every one of them is cut from this. This is the basic the length of them. And then I use the same board, clamp it down. I use the same board, clamp them down, and then they fit just like that. Yeah. So you see? Sure. So what I do is I clamp a whole bunch of them together. Right. And I take my drill with, uh, let me grab it. So I take the drill and just sit there, break right to the top of it, and go through like six of them at a time, all clamped down. Then once I do that, you know, I'll have a whole stack cut. Yep. So when I build that four by eight section that needs three of these, I have them. I have, obviously, I run out of them because I have seven in total. When I build that section, I'll just grab three of these and get to building it right here behind me and then put it on right there. And then I'll make more later. And these, I have a whole bunch of these made from the templates. Right. So I have a whole bunch of these made and um, more tape measures. More tape measures. <laughs> <laughs> Can never have like enough of them. Yeah, I think I think I have like 14 tape measures now. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, so Hi, as I explained guys. earlier too, I explained down here as you see the plugs. So you see the plugs all are coming to use. Right. Sure. So the, adding those plugs all around was definitely, definitely needed and important. I have my nice saw right here, all set up at 40 degrees. In fact, I was cutting, I was cutting supports on the last video. I was cutting supports for this right behind me. Mm, right, right, okay. In the last section I did, so I was cutting those. And just like any, uh, any professional model builder, I leave everything the way it was when I left. I didn't put anything away. <laughs> <laughs> Can't waste so, time putting stuff away. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna. So that's why you see the pieces just sitting there the same way as it was before, just <laughs> the way it was. That's what my like. Build. That's how it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, so this that's right. right, there. Yeah. That's right. Every time I extend my layout, though, I run out of more table space. I gotta clean more and more <laughs> and more. I mean, that's the typical part. So that's why I built this thing, knowing that I'm a hoarder and I do dumb shit like that that the bottom is for storing stuff. And that was um, smart. What's that? That was smart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I know. I just know how I am. I just know that eventually everything around will end up underneath the layout, you know? Right, so sure. what else? Uh, I, I have some um, the, the foam two by two squares for like the floor. I right. just has, I haven't installed those yet. Um, what else? Like I said about the lighting. So even it's it's hard to see you can't see in video but all of these lights now are all leds now so oh, cool i just I saw, you, I saw you were thinking about upgrading once you got a couple accidentally or something correct correct so what happened was and it's kind of funny because i'm always you guys know i'm always doing some crazy shit so i accidentally bought a couple right so i was like oh shit i bought a couple so after i bought a couple and i took some down i still had the packages like I bought a whole bunch. So I still had like a whole bunch of packages of the original lights, the original fluorescent ones. I had all the packages, right? Not all of them, but like 15. And they were all fairly new. So I took them all and I shoved them back in their packages. <laughs> yeah. back in depot. They gave me like a $103 credit. I went and bought, so that was like for 10, $103 yeah. credit. Mm. I took the $103 credit. I bought 10 more LED lights, cost me $127. Out there it cost yeah. me 24 bucks. So to swap out 10, Regular to 10 LEDs was 24 bucks. That was so, well worth it. Yeah, well worth yeah. it. I did it a couple of times so far. Yeah. But I went from just having two to now only needing 10 more. That's pretty crazy, right? Uh, I needed yeah. a total of 50, but now I just need 10 more. So I think my total number was like 32. I got like 32 lights in the last week. Wow. 32. 
and because of you know swapping out the old ones, right. uh-huh. 32 times 12 would have been what 360 plus right. tax. So, yeah, I saved quite a bit of money on doing that. That's how I do everything, as you know. In fact, the new drill that I just bought is broken. I bought it broken because I'm taking it back to Home Depot tomorrow. That's how I, and it's straight up, because it's a lifetime warranty. It's not a scam or nothing illegal. I take your broken stuff, take it back and give it to the manufacturer and say, it's broken. And they say, oh, we know. Okay, here's a new one. Totally yeah, legit. Right. That's totally true. legit. In fact, that's how I got like all these drills here. I'll show you the one I just did yesterday. I think I just did one yesterday. Hey, where's it at? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just did it yesterday. So here you go. I can show you what I did yesterday. Put this out the way. So yesterday, I got one thing in the mail, and the guy said it didn't work. It was broken, and he gets it. He sends it to me, and I'm like, "This thing works." So it did work. It probably was broken at some point, but I'm not mad that it didn't work. But I went, took it right back to Home Depot. I said, it "Doesn't work," and this they gave me a brand new one. Nice. So Dang. the one I had was an X4, twenty dollars, knowing it was broken. And this is like a hundred and thirty dollars at Home Depot. Brand new, free. And That's great. last week, I do it all the time. Last week, I bought a six and a quarter inch circular saw. It's an older version for like 40 bucks. Took it back and I got the seven and a quarter. And this one is really good. They just, they work so good. Like as soon as you let go from the um, the, the trigger, it right. almost stops. <laughs> Look how fast that stops. Wow. Yeah. It goes <laughs> There's no, yeah. there's no like just free yeah, spinning. Yeah. That's thing nice. Work really good. So that's how I've been buying a ton of these tools for building this layout, and it's only because I'm obsessed. There's no other reason. I'm just obsessed with drills now. So <laughs> what? Really? Having, you need it like, like realistically, I needed like five. That's realistically, I needed five because <laughs> it drove me crazy trying to find a stupid drill was on the other end of the, the, yep. the basement. I'm building it drove me crazy. So. Realistically, I needed about five and then six and seven and eight and nine. Now I'm up to like nine or ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I'm up to nine. Nine drills now. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's what's going on. Um, what else? I have to add lighting behind me. I don't know if you see. So my next, I have a few next projects to work on. But behind me, I have to add lighting over to this area over here because if you look, you see the lighting goes along the wall. It goes right along the wall, but it doesn't come out to my peninsula. Uh-huh. Okay, right. Yeah. I see what so you're the saying. peninsula is not lit. So when I, again, yeah. like I told you guys, when I started planning this layout, there's one thing we all knew was it, it was, wasn't rocket science. I knew my layout was going to be built all around the whole layout, right? right? So installing light was easy around the whole basement. Simple. Sure. But I didn't know where the peninsula was going to be, so I never put the peninsula ones up. So I, although I have one, two... I think I have two more lights available. I'm going to need a total of six, like one, two, three on each side, I think, three or four. So I might need a total of eight, which is no big deal. It's only 115 bucks for six. Okay. So that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. 115 bucks for six lights. Yeah. That's, that's a decent price. I was paying 40 bucks a piece at Home Depot when I first started buying them in 2014. I was talking about them in my early videos. Oh, you got to get this new lighting. It's beautiful, high output. T5s, I was like promoting them big. And then what, what do they do to me? What do they do to me? Make LEDs, man. They do mm. LEDs. Uh, I'm already heavily invested in these T5s. They, they um, waited until you spent the money. They did. They did. They were like, okay, we, we have all the money. We, we have all the money. Okay, give them the new product. You know, <laughs> right? 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 all the 2020 cars are sold. They're all gone. Give them the 21s. That's how they did that. <laughs> yeah. um, but I've been having fun with this, guys. I, I, I truly have so much fun with it because it, it's just fun to build. I like building. I'm a builder. So I have yeah. a lot of fun building this layout. Running trains is fun. That's for Darius. That's what he can't wait for. I'm sure. But I love to build and create. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, it's well, obvious how much fun you're having. Yes. Yes. I well, love coming down here. I was going to ask you is, um, w- once you get the track down and everything, do you scratch build your structures? Do you do kits? What are you going to do? So uh, let's see where they at. I have on my old layout, if you remember my old layout, I removed some buildings and sold a whole bunch of them. But I kept, oh, man.
Well, I guess, Brian, that this really should have made it into the blooper segment. You see, I thought that last month's, <laughs> last month's Community Roundhouse was going to air on Brian's birthday. It turns out it was tonight. So I had something planned for Brian that would have been a surprise. But since I was a month early, I guess it's not much of a surprise now. But let's take a look. Th this show is going to air on Brian's birthday. So oh, before yes. we let him go, let's say happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, Brian. You ready, Brian? Now, now hold on, John. Hold on, John. Next happy month. birthday Next to you. Next month. Uh, Happy birthday to you. <laughs> to Happy birthday, dear Brian. Happy birthday to you and many more. And I want to thank everybody and thank John. But John just told on me I'm a year older. And not only that, he tried to make me a year and a month older, a, a month early. <clears throat> Hey, that's what friends are for, Brian. <laughs> hey, what, what else are friends for, Brian? That's exactly right. And that's what John is, and I appreciate him. And that's what Wilmer is, and I appreciate him. And that's what Vinny is, and all of you, Mark, Dale, all you guys in chat. We appreciate you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Y'all might not have known it was my birthday, but I tell you what, how great that was to have it work out this way. The fifth episode, my favorite number's five. The fifth episode of our show in the fifth month on my birthday. It couldn't be any better. Thank you very much. Well, happy birthday, Brian. I hope you had a good one. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all being here and being in chat. I appreciate each and every one of y'all that watch in replay. Do this for me. If you're watching on the replay, leave us a comment below. Make sure you like it if you're in chat. And if you leave a comment below, make sure you like it. If you're watching the replay, make sure you do leave a comment so we know you were here. We also want to encourage you to check the description below for the Community Roundhouse link. You can go there to share your videos with us so we can feature you in Episode 6. Tell us about Episode 6, John. Episode 6 is coming up on June 10th at, at 6 o'clock Eastern, as always, and it'll be on my channel, Schuylkill River Valley. And that's right before Sparky, just like every month, y'all. The second Wednesday of the month, an hour before Sparky, this month is on the Schoolkill River Valley channel. And we'd like to thank everybody who contributed today. We'd like to thank Nick, Lehigh Valley 1980, Claude, Jerry, Dustin Hoffman, and I'm forgetting somebody, Brian. That's right. I tell you what, let's just do this. We want to thank everybody that contributed in the past. We want to thank everybody that contributed today. We want to thank everybody that's going to contribute in the future. We appreciate y'all in chat for being here. Thank all of you for being here. We appreciate you. We want to thank y'all for coming next month. We're going to see you at John's channel. That is June 10th, 6 p.m., one hour before Spark. That's right. We'll see you then. John didn't thank Vinnie, Mark, or Dale. This is Brian thanking Vinnie, Mark, and Dale. Thank y'all very much, Vinnie, Mark, and Dale. This is Brian thanking Vinnie, Mark, and Dale, not John. <laughs> I'll remember that, Brian. Yeah.